Okay, uh, let's see some demonstration on loops. So how to use loops. So in our demo, I will start my GCC document uh, using Docker start minus AI GCC. So this is my Docker image, and I change the uh, um, maybe I create a directory called loops. And go to this directory, empty directory, and I will write some programs. So let's see. First of all, I want to write a program uh, to add numbers until they get zero. So I write a program for total dot c. So this will read num all. A set of positive numbers and add them together. So I start writing the program. I include stdio.h. Right. First, I include stdio.h. My main program start here and end here. So inside that, uh, first of all, uh, I want to read a positive integer. So I instruct the user to do so using printf statement and say Right, and then I scan it. Okay, that number D, and let's say it is a number. Obviously, I have to define this number number as integer and then I need to zero and there I need to type the address of the number right so this number is three then what I want to do is I want to add all numbers in order to add that I need another variable so I take it as total and assign that to be zero at the beginning and then I do it here I add them. I say total plus equal number. As you may see, total plus number assigned to total we can write as plus equal. So then total plus number number is number to add the total to the number and Assign back to the number. So I have to do this three statement until that number is a positive number. So because of that, I do it in a do I look like do and say these things, then why? While number less than or equal to zero. Right. So then I print the total. Total equal and then give the, then I give the place. I want to put the total and then I say total something like that and finally zero right 
put it detail here. Right. Okay. So this is my uh, program. Right. So as you see, when I do that, it's a enter number. Scan it. Edit. But I want to stop it when it's negative number. So let's say I enter a negative number here, then this negative number will also add it to that. I don't want to do that. So because of that, inside that I check here. If number less than or equal zero, then I say stop it. Right. So that may not add it to this. Then this program will add all the numbers until I enter negative number number less than zero. So that's what we did. Let's save this and then compile or oh, some errors. Don't want to worry about it. See whether what's happened. Okay, I misspelled this, you see. So I opened the program and I understood that I misspell here. Maybe when it's T O total T O T A T O T A right total and here also that. Now let's try back another error. I told you something here T O T A. So you see it's again misspelled here. The T O T A T A right total T O here also it should be T O T A Right? Great. I'm fine. So now I run in my edit out. It asks me to enter a number. I say I enter two. So talk is two. Why stop? Why? My condition perhaps. Oh, let's see. It's a printer, scan if a number. If number is just there, no equal zero. Break. No, I step. I do it while this condition is wrong. No, I want to do it. This number is greater than zero. I want to repeat it greater than zero. If it is less than or equal to zero, it stops. That's what happened. So I save it. I made a mistake there. So I compile then back and run it again. Enter number two. Okay. Now it's correct. And add another number three. Maybe another number five. And I think stop zero. Then it's say five, eight, two, ten. Right, so it will add the numbers until like that. If I enter negative number or zero, after I enter negative or zero, it stops. So you see, I got the correct total. So, as I mentioned, we can write the same program using while loop if you wish. So, I do it with the do one. Let me write the same program total with the while loop. So that I copy this program and maybe I say total w total. Right. Since I don't want to type it again, I name it less w total. And I want to do this with the while loop. In the while loop, we check the condition at the beginning. So I have to change here. Find number greater than zero, then do this. I look, check the num, check the value at the beginning. So not like at the end. So this is while loop look like. So if you do while loop, we don't need break. We can remove this line. In the VI editor, if you press D, letter D twice, we can delete a line. So I want to delete this line, if line. So 
So I pressed letter D two times. This line will get deleted. So then I say print number, scan it the number, scan the number, and add that until number greater than zero. So then in order to check that actually I have to read the number first. For that I need to put this two before the while on the top as well. So let me copy these two lines. In the VI editor, if you want to copy a line, so you type, uh, sorry, I do, U is undo, so I do DD, delete. If you want to copy a line, so you have to type, I think V, and then select the line you want to copy like that. So I want to cut this, uh, sorry, copy this. So then I type Y and then go to the place where I want to copy and type P. So these two lines get copied to the top. So I then say enter the number and scan this number, check whether the number is greater than zero. Then what I need to do, I need to add them. So the to this line need to become to the top. So I want to cut and paste that. For that, uh, I have to type uh, V and select the line V I want to cut and then type, uh, uh, then type uh, to cut, then I need to type D in the VI editor, it get cut. And then I come to the place where I want to paste it and say P. All right. So that's how it's look like. So I read the number and check whether the number greater than zero. And then I add that, I read another number. I do it while number is greater than zero. And finally I print that. So the same program using the while loop something look like this. So let me now save this program and compile now my this and then run it. So you see, so when I enter zero, it's break. Get the correct number. So that's how we write a program to enter a set of numbers and kind of add them together until we enter a negative number. Right. Now let's try to write a program to find it out the factors of even number. So for that, we write a program called act.c. So I H file first and I start my main program right and then I want to enter a number so I type number and then I like that and and say D and kind of address of the number. So obviously I need to define this variable. Right. So now I want to find the factors of this given number. For that, maybe I use a for loop. So I write a for loop and initialize an integer variable called i to be one at the beginning. And then check whether this i is less than or equal to the given number. And then I increase the value i by one, i plus plus. So that is my for loop. Right. 
inside the for loop what i should do now i want to identify i what i want to do is here i get a variable for integer i and one by one i increase the i until it equal to the number and each i i want to see whether this i is a factor of given number to check whether that i is a factor of given number i use a if condition there i say if number module uh, i equal equality check by two equal sign zero then print f and say mm, here i print f that number uh, i so then i is a factor if not, I don't do anything, right? And finally, I can see. So let me compile this program. GCC after dot C and run a dot out. It asked me to enter number I type four. So factors are two, four, two, three, four. You see, it's get the same line, so it get confused. So in order to be clear, after the for loop, I just use a, I just use a, a print a statement with only the new line character. So then in, before in terminating the program, we go to the next line. Save that program. Compile it. Let me clear the window and run this. Right. It asked me to enter a number. I enter five. Factors of five is one and five. Right. Let me run it back. I type maybe 20. So one, two, four, five, ten, and 20 are the factors of 20. So you see, that works. So the same program, if you want, you can write it with a while loop. So how do you do that? So in order to do that, I maybe take a copy of this my factor program and I name it as w uh, factor dot c and try to write that with while loop. So this is how it look like with the for loop. So I want to convert this for loop into a while. So how do I do that here like that? So so I have I need to first I need to initialize the variable. So I say integer i equals zero. And then I need to say whether while i condition, that is why whether i is less than or equal number. That is my condition. And inside the while loop, what I want to do is this. So for that, I copy and paste this statement. So I press V and mark that, and Y to copy, and tag to the place, and T to paste. Then this is how it looks like. So as you see, so if you do this, so there are no Update statement in the four, you see there is an update statement. We have to write the update statement as well separately. We do it in the while loop. So here I say I plus plus. So after check that, increase the i by one and repeat that. Right. So that's how does this for loop we can implement using while loop, something like that. So this for loop here can implement using while loop like here. So you see, initialization, condition, increment. For loop, all you took it, initialization, condition, increment. Okay. So maybe I now, I don't need this. I delete those lines like that. All right. Let me now see whether that program gets compiled. All right. I run my error type file, it has a number, I type maybe eight. Uh, 
Oh, you get a error. Let's see why. Okay, I put I zero. It should be I should equal from one, otherwise it get divided by zero. That is some error. So we should start I using one. I should be initialized to one. All right. So I compile this program and then run it and type eight. Then see, I got the factors. So like that, we can implement the program which finding out the factors. Similarly, I saw I show you or I discuss in the session. Uh, A session, uh, a program which actually program which uh, read uh, print print a number train. How can we write such program? So let's see. We want to write write such program. Uh, let's say this program is maybe vi triangle. So I started with include H file and then I do my main. statement and then toss my main. So then I want to print the triangle until so there i have to read the end so i say print f and a number like that and say scan e like that address of the number like that. Uh, so obviously I have to define number as integer. Like that. So now I want to print the number triangle that is loop inside loop. Use a for loop for that. I initialize the for loop with integer i. First of all I I equal zero and then I say I understand or equal this number of rows. Remember what I would like to do is increase I one by one. This is the word outer for loop. Right inside of this for loop, I need to get a inner for loop. So I write another for loop for loop j initialized to be zero and I check whether j less than or equal to y and then increase the value of j. This is my inner for loop in there. I print p and print j. Close that for loop, and after I print a one row, I then go to the new line. That I say print a new line, like something like that. So you see, for loop inside there is another for loop. Okay, let me save that and compile. I compile from that program. Okay, it has a number I type for it's zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, two. If I want to start with one, so I want to do a small change here. Instead of I initializing this i is from one, zero, I take starting from one. You want to do i equal number. 
and then I start J with one, and then we want to do J. Then I might get the expected result. So, screen a bit. I'm fine. Right? I was going to know. Right. So you see, I run the program. So maybe I enter 10. This is now a triangle of 10. So you see, it works. Loop inside the loop. Right. So maybe you want to reverse a number. So I have asked you to implement a program which called reverse number. Right. Uh, so you try to implement that reverse number program. So maybe I will show you. I'm not going to show you the code, but I will execute the program and show you. So maybe I have it, some program which I implemented in my previous class. So I have a program called reverse C. I'm not going to show you, but I compile and show you how I program do. I compile it and then I run uh, a dot of five. So when it asks number, I type a number like that. You see, it's reverse it. One, two, three, four, five, twelve thousand three hundred forty-five, and it gets reverse fifty-four thousand three hundred twenty-one. Let me run the program again. I type 567, program should be 600, 765, so reverse order. Try to implement that. So the one I will ask you to implement is this multiplication table. I think I have previously implemented uh, for that, that function. I will show you, but you have to do that to yourself. Uh, so maybe in this I have that. Uh, multiplication table. Let me see whether I have it here. It should be I have a previously implement program. Uh, I guess no. Ah, here this one, right? I compiled it. When I run that, so it asks you see, it has an integer. So let's say four, it then create four multiplication tables one multiply one, one multiply two, two, one multiply three, three, and two multiply one, two, like that, and three multiply and four multiply. So if I run and type maybe 10, 10 multiplication tables. So you're supposed to write this program, right? Yourself, reverse and multiplication. So with that simple demonstrations, you might, I guess you might understand how the loops works. So I have given an exercise. So do that and implement the codes which I have demonstrated and also which I haven't demonstrated. All the codes you have to type yourself, compile, run, and if it works perfectly, upload to the G. Okay, do that yourself. Coding, if you want to learn coding, you have to code. So there are no way of coding without code. So you have to sing. You have to jump to the water to see. You need to program to do learn program. So I repeat, program yourself, then you will learn how to program.